Hi everybody, so for the first recipe that we're making today, it's broccoli and cheese soup and we are just going to be chopping the broccoli. I chopped up two bunches of fresh broccoli and that gave me plenty of broccoli for this recipe. And this recipe is probably the most intense out of all four of these. But it's still very simple and takes very little time and it's just so healthy and good for you. So I would say that it's definitely worth all of the effort that you put into it. And most of the effort is just chopping veggies. That's pretty much it. And this recipe does not take any meat. So of course you are free to add some on the side. I always think that either grilled chicken or a side of salmon or anything like that would go really well with this recipe. And of course it would be a lot easier if you would buy all of your vegetables pre-chopped, but for me personally I like to buy them whole and then just chop them up myself. So um, because there is a lot of chopping to come, I'm going to pause the voiceover and come back when the chopping is finished. Okay, I'm back again. So for the um, broth, it says that you should use two cups of vegetable broth, but I almost never keep vegetable broth on hand. So I just use chicken broth. And also I added double the amount because I added the two cups and then I looked at it and I was like, that looks like it needs more. So I added four cups of broth and I thought that was perfect. Maybe the person who made this recipe likes their soup to be thicker but I think that four cups was fine and you can also see the consistency of the broth as it as it keeps cooking the vegetables in the pot were not even covered and as it cooked it went like the vegetables shrunk down so it wasn't a problem but um yeah I definitely think the broth is um you could definitely add more because I think it it needs more, more than the recipe says. And then I just added in one bay leaf and then you put the lid on the pot and let it cook for uh, probably about 15 to 20 minutes. 
And then we are making a roux, which is a white sauce with um, butter and flour and milk. So first of all, we melt three tablespoons of butter in the pot. And once that's melted, you just um, add in three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and stir that um, for a few minutes until it's really well um, combined. You don't want to have any lumps in it at all. And you want to make sure the heat is not too high. It should be medium to low heat so that it doesn't burn. It can burn very quickly. So just stir that around for um, a while until it's fully cooked and until the butter is completely melted. And once that's completely combined, you just start adding in a little bit of milk at a time. And after each, um, after each addition, you stir it until it's fully combined and there's no lumps. And then after that, you add in another little bit um, and you just keep slowly adding in more and more until it's fully combined. The goal is just to make a sauce that is um, not lumpy at all and that's completely smooth. So that's why I just do a little bit at a time and just mix it until it's fully smooth. So while we are doing that, the vegetables are cooking away and they should be just about finished at this point. So we can remove the lid and add in our white sauce. And as you can see, the broth is really nice and thick and adds a lot of bulk to the soup. And it really helps to add a lot of flavor. And I think it helps with the um, broth being... Um, a little bit thick. I think it helps to thin it out a little bit. So that's also something to keep in mind in regards to the broth. And then we have to make sure that we remove the bay leaf and we're going to add in all the spices. So the first spice that we are adding is um, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And the next one is an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. And then the next one is a half a teaspoon of dried basil. And the next one is a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, which I believe I did a half a teaspoon instead. And then one teaspoon of salt and some pepper. So then you just stir that all together and you can also turn the heat down to low at this point because the vegetables are all cooked and it doesn't really need to cook anymore. It just needs to make sure that it's heated through. And the recipe says that we're supposed to add one and a half cups of cheese, half a cup of sharp cheddar cheese, and one heaping cup of regular Gouda cheese. But I just added in a little bit of cheese that I had in the fridge because I forgot to get some at the store. So, yeah, I definitely would have added more cheese, but this was all that was in the bag and it was not the right kind of cheese, but it tasted good. So, um... I'm sure it would be better with the cheese the recipe called for, but I just worked with what I had. So the second recipe is taco salad, and I'm starting it off with brown rice because the rice will take a long time to cook. And of course, you can use white rice if that's what you want to use. But for me, I, I just like to use brown rice. So um, for me, taco salad is something that's just very simple and quick and easy to throw together. So I try to not make it complicated and I use just very simple ingredients. I made ground beef and while I was chopping it up, I remembered that I wanted to add an onion to stretch the meat more, so I cut that up and added that in. 
And I always find that the meat is the thing that runs out first whenever you make taco salad. It's like you have a ton of rice, a ton of vegetables, and then the meat runs out really fast. So I try to add things to it to make it stretch further this time. I used a whole pound of ground beef. I used an onion and I added beans. So that actually worked really well for us and we had plenty of meat and leftovers as well so that was wonderful i also added a package of taco seasoning you can always make your own and actually later in the video i made my own because i ran out of the store-bought stuff so yeah you definitely need to season the meat because it will add so much more flavor to it and I don't know what to say to fill up all the empty spaces. <laughs> I think I've added that music a few too many times now. And I don't want to make you guys bored. <laughs> so yeah, being a YouTuber is interesting. One minute you're learning how to uh, add a music clip. And then the next minute you're learning how to do a voiceover and learning what to say. And it's like, man, there are so many things to figure out. But... It's wonderful. I'm so glad I get to do this and I hope you guys like the video. And I'm trying to not have any silent spaces in here, so forgive me if I mess up a few times. Okay, so I'm gonna just be chopping up lettuce and tomatoes, so maybe I will turn on the original audio for the video for the next minute or so. And something that I forgot to get at the store was chips. So I didn't, I had a few like crumbs in a bag. So I just used those. Um, but yeah, we didn't really have enough chips for everybody. But anyways, I just did those chips and the ground beef and rice. And then um, I just added lettuce and tomatoes. I also added um, some ranch. I know that a lot of people do sour cream and I also would have done cheese, but we were out. So yeah, I definitely could have added a lot more things to it. Um, growing up, we added, yeah, cheese and sour cream and, and also avocados. Um, yeah, you could definitely add a lot more things to it. So our third recipe is Mexican beef and rice casserole. This recipe is very quick and easy to throw together. The first thing is just to chop half an onion. And I also chopped up a bell pepper and some cloves of garlic.
So then you just cook the bell pepper and the onion in oil. Um, I started cooking the onion first before I added the bell pepper, but you just cook them together until they are nice and soft. And then once they're soft, you add the garlic and you let that cook for about a minute. And then you add the ground beef. And then you add in a pound of ground beef and chop that up and let that cook a little. And then I added in some of my homemade taco seasoning. And I can't remember exactly everything that I put in, but I believe it was cumin, paprika, um, onion powder, garlic powder. I can't remember if I put in chili powder, but I think I did. Um, anyways, I just googled homemade taco seasoning and I did one of the first ones that came up. So it's very simple if you don't have homemade, if you don't have the packets of taco seasoning. So anyways, I just wanted to share that in case that might be helpful to one of you. And the recipe says that you should add one and a half cups of salsa and two tablespoons of tomato paste. And I actually did neither of those. I just added in um, an extra tomato that I had sitting on the counter. And then I added in a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And I know that um, some people might not be comfortable going away from what the original recipe said. And that's fine. But for me, I just kind of try to be flexible and work with what I have. So that's what I did. And I think it turned out fine. Um... And as you can see, I added in the corn and black beans. It also says to add in green chilies, but I didn't get those at the store, so I skipped that. And then I added in one cup of white rice. And in this recipe, I would use white rice because of the way that it's supposed to cook in the ingredients. And I think brown rice would probably make it burn because it would cook too long. And I added in two cups of chicken broth. It does call for beef broth, but I don't really keep beef broth on hand, so I just use chicken broth. So you just cover that, and then you let it boil for about 18 minutes, and I check it pretty frequently to make sure that it doesn't burn on the bottom, and um, also just to make sure that it doesn't cook dry. So yeah, it varies how long it takes. It can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes for me. And the reason why I try to be as flexible as possible with recipes is because I we're just in a season where we have to be frugal. And so I just try to use what I can and not get like a bunch of extra things. So um, anyways, with the cheese, I definitely would have added in a lot more cheese than that. But that was what I had. So I just added in the cheese that I had and it was good. So... And that is the completed recipe, so it's ready to dish and serve. And for the final recipe, I am making salmon brown rice and steamed carrots so i started the rice um first because obviously the brown rice will take a while to cook and for the sauce i just melted some butter in the microwave and then i added some chopped garlic and you can use garlic powder if you don't have fresh garlic and then i just added some mustard and um, it was supposed to have honey, but I ran out of honey, so I just used sugar instead. So you just mix that all together, and it's ready for the salmon. So I took the salmon out of the package, and um, this salmon is very conveniently um, in the package. It's already cut into four pieces, so if you have a very small freezer, you could actually... Um, 
take the salmon out of the original package and repackage it in sandwich bags if that would fit better in your freezer. Um, I got this at Winco for only $6, so I'm very happy with that. So um, I preheated the oven to 400 degrees and then I brushed the butter mixture over the salmon and um, the butter hardened as you might be able to see in the video. I think you can see it um, because the salmon was still cold. I had been keeping it in the fridge to thaw. So um, yeah, the butter would harden as soon as I brushed it on but um, that doesn't matter because as soon as you put it in the oven it's just gonna melt. So then I just seasoned the top with salt and pepper and it was ready to go into the oven. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think mine baked for about 15 minutes. Um, and I just did it until it flaked easily and the color was white. And I think I included a clip of that in here. So that's it for this video. All of these meals have turned out so good for all of us. And if you enjoy any of them, I hope that you enjoy them. And happy cooking! And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!